Ben Pearson with Roadster Tracker. One of the things that has really excited me the most about studying Mars recently is the detection of methane on Mars. And I had a video on this previously that we talked about it. There were two really good instruments that are detecting methane on Mars. One is the Curiosity rover that has an instrument that can sniff out the methane and detect it directly. Whereas the ExoMars TIGO, Trace Gas Observer, will look through the atmosphere through at the sun to determine what the atmosphere is made out of. And TIGO says that there's no methane at all on Mars, whereas the uh, Curiosity instrument says that there's methane. This is a huge, huge question. Now, there are a lot of possibilities that were discussed. One of them is that the rover is somehow making the methane, like when it's roaming over the rocks that the crushed rocks are releasing methane or something like that, which would totally explain this. But it really is a big of mystery and they've been trying to get down to the bottom of it. They've been taking and looking at the movement and they found that there's no correlation between detecting methane and the movement of curiosity. So that just didn't make sense. So they started to go back down to the drawing board and try to figure out exactly what was causing the problem. And what they realized is that ExoMars is detecting it higher up in the atmosphere because it's looking through the atmosphere at the sun, it can't really detect it exactly at the ground. You have to have enough clearance. So it's going a few kilometers above the ground. Curiosity is right next to the ground. So there could be some kind of a difference. Uh, another interesting thing is that the winds die down at night. And so if there was something that was emitting methane in the area where Curiosity is, then this methane wouldn't get very high necessarily during the day. The curiosity would detect the methane that's close to the ground because it's close to the ground. And if it was some kind of a local source or something, then maybe it's just not getting there. Another thing is Tigo must observe the methane levels during the daytime, during sunset really but it's gonna be the same time of day regardless. And this was not thought to be a huge issue because methane on Earth lasts for 300 years. If you release some methane, it's gonna stay in the atmosphere for 300 years. So we assumed that it was gonna be something similar with Mars, but everything's kind of starting to turn around. What they found was that because the atmosphere is slower during the nighttime, the winds just aren't blowing around that much. Curiosity has always detected methane at nighttime. It shouldn't make much of a difference was their thought because everything is roughly the same. And Curiosity having a RTG, it has a constant power source all of the time. So they're able to detect the methane levels regardless of the time of day. Well, the wind speeds are lower at nighttime. And so they decided to see if the wind was maybe the contributing factor to see if the wind was blowing methane away. So they took three really high precision measurements, one during the daytime, and they took the two nighttime measurements around it to really try to nail this down. The nighttime measurements revealed that they had methane as they had in previous measurements, but the daytime showed absolutely nothing. So whatever's going on, it seems like they're just, that's the, the source of the difference. Tigo was observing methane at daytime and there's no methane at daytime, but the nighttime there is methane. But what could be causing this? Now, in the previous video, we talked about how it could be something to do with the atmosphere of Mars that eats up the methane. And that's entirely possible, although to go from 300 years down to a few hours lifetime seems a little bit unlikely to say the least, but it's possible. There's still some things to clear up, but you know, methane is of a lot of interest because one of the main sources of it could be some kind of organic life. And maybe this helps to clear some of that up, but we're still trying to get this. And quite frankly, we need more instruments on the surface of Mars detecting methane 
to figure out whether or not this is an issue. Hopefully we'll get those sometime soon. Thanks guys for everything. Until next time, keep on trekking. Take care.